Well, I'm not Pastor Tim, uh, so if those of you were going to leave, this would be the time to do that now, so I'll give you time. Joking. Uh, what a great worship set. Praise God, right? Uh, we have a great worship team. Would you give them a round of hands? I mean, it's awesome. It's such a blessing to be able to come up here and share uh, after they have done such a marvelous job of getting us prepared uh, to sit at the feet of Christ and to hear from him uh, from, his, from his word. I'd like to give you a little bit of time just to get yourself settled and prepare in silence, and I'll close us out with a word of prayer, but just get your minds where you need to be, uh, and uh, sort of, if you will, get yourself prepared to hear from the Lord. Let's take some time to do that now. Father, it is truly good to be in your house and to be amongst the brethren. We rejoice in this time of worship, this time of lifting our voices, of singing praises to you. And now, Father, we come to a time where we're going to hear from you. We're going to spend some time in your word, and I just pray, Lord, that our minds and our hearts will be prepared for that, Father. I pray that we have cleared out some of the clutter and the things that can distract us from giving our full attention to you. And that whatever we've walked in here with, Father, our burdens, our joys, all the things we bring before you, we pray, Lord, as we would enter this time, we would listen. And I pray, Father, you would speak to us. I pray, Father, you chasten us if you must, but Speak to us nonetheless. I pray that we would have ears to hear and our hearts would be open to receive from you that which you want us to hear and apply to our lives. So we thank you, Father, for this time and we just pray your blessing upon it and that you'd be glorified and given all honor and praise. It's in the matchless name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. If you have your Bible or your Bible app, open up to the book of Acts. We're going to be in Acts 27. Uh, Only have five verses to get through this morning. Uh, Actually, six. I threw one in uh, after the first one. I'm not going to charge you extra for that one. That's free. Uh, But we're only going to have a couple verses, three points, so I should have you out of here a little bit sooner than 1230, okay? I'm joking. Obviously, we'll get you out of here right on time. So let me tell you a little bit about where this uh, this is coming from and what we're going to be looking at this morning. Um, About 15 years ago or so, I I was on staff in Pennsylvania. Uh, with a church, and um, I was doing a study through the book of Acts, and so we called the study a walk through Acts. Well, after about 18 months in the study, we changed it to a crawl through Acts. Um, It took me five years to get through the book of Acts with the church. Uh, It was one of the richest times I've had in my ministry career. I just thoroughly love walking through the Word of God verse by verse, Uh, and I think when we think about today and and our, our title for today is Radical Belief. You know, it's sort of rooted in the, the, the belief that the Word of God contains everything we need for life and godliness. Uh, the Word of God is complete. It is the truth. Uh, and what we're going to learn today is when we think about how we should respond in believing in the God whom we serve, uh, there's some things that we should gain from that. There's some things that we should pull from that. Uh, and kind of the reason I went back to this and was looking at this is last couple, three weeks, month or so, I've been, I've been really having a struggle uh, in, in life, just dealing with some, some difficulties and some hardships. And, uh, and it really kind of put me in a place where I was really wrestling with, uh, do I really trust God? Uh, I don't know about anybody else in here, but if you ever going through a season where you're struggling to trust God, the rest of you are lying, but there's okay, a couple of you. But it really got me in a point where I was really wrestling with that. And, and so I immediately, and in, in sort of just wrestling with those times where um, I, I was not sure where, where God was at. I don't know if you've ever been in a season of your life like that. Um, and that's really kind of, I went back to this and really just started digging out of this, and this, this sort of message is born out of that. Um, and it's really rooted in sort of what should that belief look like in our lives? Uh, what should be the outworking of that? And there's some things I want to share with you this morning before we even get into our points, but some things that really sort of came out of my study time, some things that really sort of captured my heart as I spent time in the Word of God. And one of the things is this, radical belief is a belief that defies what we see, or, or better said, is a belief that rightly interprets what we th- see in light of whom we serve. Uh, 
So, so the reality of, of our time together this morning is going to be, if you will, the, the filter or the lens in which we view life through uh, ought to be coming through the truths within the Word of God. It, it ought to rightly be done through that lens. That ought to rightly help us understand circumstances, situations, trials, tribulations, joys, whatever it might be. It really ought to be through that lens that we go to. And that was something that God had to bring me back to uh, when, when my focus got off and when my attention wasn't rightly where it was. And as I went back and looked at it in the Word of God, it wasn't God that was off, it was me. And so when we think about radical belief and the belief that we have, it's really that lens of the Word of God that has to be borne out in our everyday living. Now, radical belief also brings about radical faith that produces a radical trust. And that was really the issue I was wrestling with was trusting God to be who he says he is in his word. Uh, and that he is who he says he is in his word and that I was going to believe them. When we think about radical belief and what we see in the word of God, it, radical belief is what got Peter out of the boat. It wasn't like all the other guys were lined up behind him saying, me next. It was Peter that stepped out of the boat and walked on water. A radical belief born out in the scriptures is seen in Paul and Silas uh, to the point of praise and worship while shackled and in chains in prison, praising and worshiping the Lord. A radical belief allowed Peter and John uh, to proclaim their refusal to remain silent despite the threats from the Jewish authorities. They were going to proclaim Christ. Radical belief sustains us in the midst of our darkest days. Radical belief comforts us in the deepest of our hurts and disappointments. Radical belief commands us to forgive as we have been forgiven. Radical belief commands us to love those who are unlovable. Radical belief calls us to live a life of sacrifice and self-denial. Radical belief calls us to keep an eye towards the heavens Radical belief prompts us to remember our Lord will return. Hallelujah. And it will be not as he left, but he is the soon coming king. Amen. Radical belief brings us to the remembrance of the promises and proclamations given within his word. Has God not said? Radical belief puts a song in our heart as we sang this morning and lifted up our praise to the king. Radical belief calls us to have our focus above where our Lord is seated at the right hand of the Father. Radical belief presses us ever onward toward the prize of the high calling, to that glorious day when we will fall before the King of kings and Lord of lords and worship him. Radical belief commands us to stand firm in the midst of difficult storms. Radical belief asks us what we will believe, the lies of the devil or the truth of God. So I ask you this Lord's Day, how radical are you willing to be in your belief of the God you claim to believe in? And let's learn some things today about what that looks like in our lives. In our text before us this Lord's Day, we see the outworkings of a life lived radically, Paul. A radical belief in God, he makes some bold proclamations in light of his present circumstance. Acts 27, verses 21 through 26 now, it's important to be mindful before we jump into the text that Paul worshiped the exact same God that we worship. Amen? All right, and, and if you read the life of the Apostle Paul, he really didn't have a life of leisure. Uh, Paul lived a very difficult, hard-fought life in serving Christ. We see that throughout the book of Acts and his epistles. But when we think about the context where we're at this morning, I want to read through the passage, and we'll come back and unpack it. Starting in verse 21, so in Acts 27, verse 21, it says this. After the men had gone a long time without food, Paul stood up before them and said, Men, you should have taken my advice and not sailed from Crete. Then you would have spared yourself this damage and loss. But now I, have, now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost. Only the ship will be destroyed. Last night, an angel of God whose I am and whom I serve, stood beside me and said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must go stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. 
So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Nevertheless, we must run aground on some island. So let's set the context a little bit for what we're talking about here. Paul, towards the end of Acts, is now on his way to Rome to stand before Caesar because he has appealed to Caesar as a Roman citizen. So what we're seeing now is the ship that he is sailing on. And the journey is to arrive in Rome to have his trial before Caesar. What we see is this, where we jump in here, is that they are now at a point where they have given up all hope of survival. They, as sailors, have done everything possible to make sure they could survive, but they're at a point now where nothing is working and the storm just continues to rage. They have thrown all the tackle, all the gear overboard. They have rung ropes around the ship to make sure the hull would not crash apart, but they are at a point where they are now hopeless. Hopeless. They have no hope that they are gonna survive this. That's where we're at, and that's where we're at this morning when we set the scene. So the first thing we want to be mindful about this morning as we think about verses 21 and 22 is we need to have hope in the midst of hopeless. When we're hopeless, we've got to have hope. Now, how many in here have ever felt hopeless? But we've all had those seasons in our lives where maybe we had a feeling of hopelessness come upon us. And that's where these men were at at this point in time. But what we need to be mindful about is when we have a radical belief in God and a, and a trust in God, is that no matter how hopeless it seems, the hope we have is in God, not in our circumstances and not in our own strength to get us out of our circumstances, but it's in God. And that God is in control. When we think about this sort of hope, this is the belief we have proclaims often what seems to the eye to be utter foolishness. But just imagine Paul, imagine this scene, these men, uh, that are seasoned sailors are on this boat with Paul, okay? They're, they haven't eaten. They have been tossed and thrown about for days on end. They have done everything they can humanly possible to save the boat, and guess what? It doesn't look like any of it's going to work at all. They have no hope. And so Paul stands up in the midst of them, and what does he say to them? After the men are going a long time without food, so now they're physically exhausted. No food. The battering nonstop, they're psychologically exhausted, mentally exhausted. Paul stood up before them and said, men, you should have listened to me. Isn't that what he says? Isn't that what he says to them? They're in the midst of this incredible, difficult hardship, and Paul says, if you'd just done what I said, we wouldn't be in this mess. Way to go. How many of you have been here have ever had one of those moments with the Lord where he says, well, if you'd have just listened to what I said, Brian, we wouldn't be here today. But since you wanted to do this your way, now we've got this huge mess. Anybody ever been there? A lot of you are lying this morning. I know darn well you've been there. I mean, he stands up in front of them. They're physically exhausted. They're, they feel they're going to be dead. And he says, listen, you should have listened to me. But since you didn't, I want to encourage you in this regard. You should have taken my advice, men, but you didn't then you would have spared yourselves the damage and the loss. He says, 22, but now I urge you to keep up your courage because not one of you will be lost, only the ship will be destroyed. Now think about how that would have resonated with these individuals. Paul's not a sailor. He's not a sailor. He doesn't know anything about sailing and he's telling them it's gonna be okay. The only thing that's gonna happen is we are gonna lose the ship. Now again, in the midst of all of this, what would you be thinking if you were there? This guy is crazy, right? He doesn't know anything about this. We're in the midst of this storm. We're, none of us are gonna die? Highly unlikely is what they would be thinking. All right, what is this guy talking about? How is there any hope here? But Paul is saying there's hope in this. But when we think about our belief and our trust, it's opposite of what we often see. Often when we see things, we gotta be mindful of looking at it through the lens of the word of God the lens of what God says in his word and how we rightly interpret those circumstances and those situations. That's the lens that Paul was looking at it through. Not all the storms and the wind and the waves and everything else, but the lens of God's word. Radical belief often challenges us, who is Lord of my life? Is it Christ or is it my feelings? When we often think about difficulties, hardships, trials and tribulations, our emotions and our feelings can press upon us. And if we're not careful and guarded, they can often unseat Christ from the throne of our hearts and step in there. 
We need to be mindful about having a radical belief as we keep Christ on the throne of our hearts and we rightly interpret our circumstance, our situations, and even our feelings through the lens of what God's word says. Imagine if you lived your life solely based off of how you felt, responded based off how you were felt. Imagine what that would be like. That would be like a roller coaster of an existence, would it not? Right when we go back to the word of God, it rightly founds ourselves in the sense of what has God said? What has God proclaimed? When we think about radical belief, it does ask of us to be bold and courageous. We must possess courage and conviction about the God we claim to believe in. Because remember, by the eye, it might not look as if it's going to turn out well. But courage is asked of us as followers of Christ to believe that God is in control and that God knows what is going on. That can be challenging at times in our life as well, brothers and sisters. But we must possess hope in the midst of what might seem hopeless. Paul is trying to bring hope to his fellow seamen as they are on this voyage. Now let's talk about 23 and 24, those verses and what that should look like in our lives. When we think about what this is, we need to be mindful of this. God has a plan and a purpose. Do you believe that, brothers and sisters? That was weak. About two of you believe that, right? This is an important one. This is a very important one. We think about God has a plan and a purpose. Look at verses 23 and 24. So Paul goes on after saying, you should have listened to me. We shouldn't have done this, but you did anyway. Now here's where we're at in the midst of this. None of you are going to lose your life, he goes on to say. Then verse 23 builds upon that. He says, this is why I say this. He says, last night, an angel of God, whose I am, and whom I serve stood beside me and said, do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand trial before Caesar, and God has graciously given you the lives of all who sail with you. Radical belief is needed to keep us clearly aware of whom we serve. Now, I don't know about you, but at times I get that twisted in my life. At times I struggle with thinking that God somehow should be serving me, not me serving him. But Paul rightly understands where God is saying to him is, Paul, there is a plan and there is a purpose in all things. And often when we think about God's plan and purpose, we often don't get to see everything that we would like. There's often things that we don't see. But God is saying, Paul, there's a plan and purpose in all things. Now, why is this important to keep in mind? You know, when I was going, when I'm going through this difficulty and this trial in my life right now, when I was really struggling, it was one of these things where, I don't, I don't know about you, but there's times in my life where you're seeking God, right? You don't have clarity that something's difficult. You know, something's hard, something's pressing. You know, and, and I knew intellectually the truths of God's word. I know that. But when you're in those moments, and I don't know if you've ever had these experiences, but you know, for me, it was one of those moments where, I don't know, you're down here. Right? And you're crying out to God. And you're like, Father, I don't understand. Lord, I don't understand what's going on. Lord, why is this happening? Why is this taking place in my life? And have you ever been in those moments where you do that and all you get back is silence? And I'm still left here in the midst of this. And then you go down that path of why me? I don't deserve this. And in those moments of despair, in those moments of difficulty, in those moments that are so trying upon us in our lives, it's the Lord that speaks and says, look up, child. Look up. Whom do you serve? Whom do you belong to? You are a child of the king. And I've got a plan and a purpose And those are the things, brothers and sisters, that we need to get up off our knees. Oh my gosh, that floor is really far away. (laughs) Off of our knees, right? And stand up and remember whom we serve, that God has a plan and God has a purpose. Now hear me in this. As soon as Paul said this to them, they weren't somehow airlifted off of the boat. They were still left in the midst of the storm, were they not? Amen? Amen. So even in the reality of those times when we're on our knees and those difficulties and those hardships, doesn't mean we're going to be delivered out of that circumstance or that situation. God's got a plan and God's got a purpose. We must keep that in mind. 
Because often, I don't know about you, but in those moments when I cry out to God, and I can imagine these men, these men, I can imagine Paul on their knees praying for God to rescue them, praying for God to save them. And the storm just kept raging. Often when we're in the midst of those difficulties and those trials and we're not reflecting on the fact that God's got a plan and God's got a purpose. And oh, by the way, God is aware of your circumstance and your situation. As a matter of fact, if we truly study the word of God and we truly understand this, not only is he aware, he allowed it. He allowed it, brothers and sisters. He is sovereign and omniscient. But we're in the midst of it. Sometimes when we're in prayer and we're thinking God is not even hearing us. We're thinking, is he asleep? Am I not worthy of being recognized? Does he not know what's going on? Can't you not see the difficulties? In the midst of those times, we need to remember and go back to God's got a plan and a purpose for your life. Radical belief, brothers and sisters, helps us remember that no matter how dark the night or how big the storm, God has promised to never leave us nor forsake us. Do you you believe that this morning? Do you believe that? Do you believe that to your deepest part of who you are? And if you believe that and you understand that, brothers and sisters, we can get through anything with the Lord, amen? No matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult it might seem. The last thing we want to talk about this morning is this, and I love this verse. Verse 25, and and what Paul is saying in regards to our radical belief is, it asks us to believe God. Just real simple. Believe God. I'm saying, well, Brian, I do. Well, it's easy to do that when we're sitting in here. Right? He says this, so keep up your courage, men. And for I have faith in God that it will happen just as he told me. Just as he told me. Very simple. Very straightforward. Paul's just saying, I believe God. I believe God is, that it will turn out exactly as, as he's told me. I, I believe God that, that he actually is uh, the God of his word. Uh, that, that actually the things that are in this are actually the truths uh, of God. That, that his word, when he says these things, I believe that he will deliver on these things that he said to me. I simple, I believe. It's not radical in any way, shape, or form. It's just believing God to be who he said he is. It's just living that out each and every day of our lives in the midst of whatever difficulty, hardship, trial, or tribulation we might be. So radical belief brings us to a point of decision. Those men on that ship had a point of decision to make. Paul saying, trust me, not me, but trust God. I believe him is going to turn out just as he said. Because an angel of the Lord visited me, whom I belong to and whom I serve. It said this. No one's going to die. But the ship is going to crash. Now, I don't believe at that time, so just so we're clear, I don't believe at that time these guys jumped up and went, yeah! I knew it. I knew, I knew we were going to be okay, Paul, and that you were going to, and yeah, all we got to do is crash the ship. <laughs> Sounds pretty good, right? So we just crashed the ship, and everybody's going to be okay. It'll be fine. Have you seen the waves out there, Paul? Paul, just look out there. Those are 40-footers, right? And we just got to crash the ship. I don't believe they responded like that at all. I believe a lot of them were still kind of thinking, Look, someone knock this guy out and throw him overboard because this is crazy, right? But they were at a point of being hopeless. They were at a point of being hopeless. They had no hope. Paul brings a word for them of hope that God's got a plan and a purpose and was around what God had asked of Paul in his life to do. Look, brothers and sisters, when we think about radical belief and radical trust, it's really not radical in any way. At the end of the day, it really is a challenge for you and I to say, I believe God. I believe God. I believe God, and I believe his word. Now, here's the challenge with that. I know this might shock some of you, and I wish this were the case, but 
I've tried it for a lot of years. Um, at night, I kind of slip this under my pillow, and I hope by osmosis, all the truths of it will soak into my head. It doesn't work, right? It doesn't work that way. So the reality of it is to know the truths of this word, you've got to what? Read it, study it, memorize it. Right, because in the midst of my trial, my tribulation, and what I'm going through right now, I'm going back to those verses that I know are in here, that I've learned and memorized, and I choose to believe God. I choose to believe what he said in his word. And none of that, as I said to you, removes me from the current circumstance, but it rightly helps me identify and understand that God is at work in the midst of my circumstance. That God is equally doing a work in my life as he is as those that are around me. That God is moving me from where I'm at now to where he wants me to be. Often that is done through trials and tribulations, brothers and sisters. Often that is done through hardship and difficulties. We are put in those places to be refined by the fire. Where the heat is turned on and the dross and the impurities rise to the surface and they're removed and you get a purer product. That is the sanctification process that God is working in and out of every one of us here this morning. In the midst of those things, it's important to be mindful of the fact that God is at work and doing a mighty work in each and every one of you. And it simply comes back to saying, I believe God. 